our New Testament word this morning comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, also known as the fruits of the Spirit. Hear now God's word to us. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And then we turn to the Gospel of John as we continue our sermon series on the vine and the branches. Today we'll read from verses 4 through 6. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So last week we talked a little bit about pruning, and we noted that if you are not bearing fruit, then you are pruned or removed from the vine. And if you are bearing fruit, well, then you are pruned as well, so you can bear more fruit. So we noted last week, you're pruned if you do and you're pruned if you don't. Well, today we're going to talk about the fruit. What is it that we are supposed to produce? Who produces it? How is it produced? What is it for? And what is fruit, anyway? It's obviously extremely important in this passage because that term, bear fruit, is used six times in the first eight verses of John 15. So fruitfulness is one of the the main themes of this passage. And so today, fruit becomes our focus. So there we are, branches in the vine. Now what? We've already noted that the branch does not exist for itself. It's not an end in itself. The purpose of the branch, as Al so eloquently noted, the purpose of the branch is to bear fruit. And so we are supposed to produce fruit. And if we don't produce fruit, we're going to wither and we're going to be removed from the vine. We aren't fulfilling our purpose if we're not producing fruit. So it's pretty important that we understand exactly what that means and how we can produce as much fruit as possible. In fact, bearing fruit almost sounds like a threat. You know, if you don't produce enough fruit, you're going to get cut off from the vine. So what does that mean? How do we produce fruit? So once we're abiding in Christ, once we become that branch, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that's just the beginning not the end of our spiritual journey. And so there's an expectation here. This expectation in regards to this metaphor is about producing fruit. So once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we don't just kick back and rest on our laurels and say, okay, our job here is done. No, there's more work to do. It's about producing. And notice that you never kind of retire from being a branch. 
We don't just say, okay, well, you know, I used to produce fruit. I was good. I'm going to let someone else produce fr fruit now, and that's good. No, producing fruit never ends. As long as we are a branch, that is our job. So most of us, you know, think that in gratitude to God for all that God has done for us, we are to, to bear that fruit, to do everything possible, to work harder, to do more, to participate, to get involved, to do lots of, of good deeds and wonderful things in this world. We live our Christian lives and, and we do the work of the church. We make the best choices we can. But the problem is that the work is never done in the church. There's always more to be done. There's always more fruit to produce. And, and we're hoping that we produce enough because if we don't, well, you know what happens. We get removed. So there's this constant striving, this constant stress. Am I producing enough? Am I doing enough? And it gets a little crazy. And in the midst of this franticness and this busyness, we hear Jesus' words, apart from me, you can do nothing. The biggest misunderstanding when it comes to producing fruit is that we think it's our responsibility to do it. We think it's up to us to produce more, to work harder, to try more. And when we try to bear that fruit by ourselves, when we try to prove what a great branch we are, we realize that we fall short. Because it's not about us doing this on our own. It's not even our work that we ask God to help us with from time to time. Because bearing fruit is not up to us. The kind of life that God calls us to live is something that is absolutely impossible when we try to do it on our own. And so if there's one thing to remember from this morning, if there's one thing from this passage about bearing fruit, it's the idea that the production of fruit is not up to us. It's not our responsibility, not even with good intentions to thank God for, for all God has done for us. So we can quit trying, quit striving so hard to do more and to be more, to try to please God or, or earn approval or just produce enough fruit on that branch to be worthy. We don't have to try that hard anymore. Jesus offers us a better way. So if it's not up to us to produce that fruit, how, how does it come about? Well, we bear fruit not by our own efforts of, of squeezing and working and trying really super hard to make it happen. We produce fruit by abiding in the vine. It's the vine that works through us to produce that fruit in the world. Pruned by the vine grower, tended by the vine grower to make sure that we are fruitful. Think of, think of how fruit grows. It's organic. It's natural. It happens little by little as the, the branch is rooted in that vine. It's a natural process. And the vine then provides everything this branch needs to produce fruit. The vine produces the, the, the sap. It gives everything essential. It provides everything the branch needs so that the fruit can be produced. So the fruit is not a demand. It's not a threat. The fruit is a promise. It's a promise from the vine, from Jesus, who says, I want to work through you and in you to offer some fruit in this world. Fruit is not our work, because work is effort, and it's labor, and it's intense. But the idea of fruit 
is that it's the silent, natural, growing presence of the Spirit of God in our lives that only happens when we are connected to the vine. And a healthy life in Christ always bears fruit. So while fruit might be the purpose of the branch, it's not ultimately up to the branch. So what is the branch's responsibility? Well, it goes back to abide. Did you hear that that phrase that Jesus said, just as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So we have a part to play in this fruit-bearing process. But the part that we play, the responsibility we have, is where are we going to abide? Where are we going to live from? What is the priority in our lives? And if we want to bear Jesus' fruit in this world, then we have to abide in him. There is no other way. But abiding isn't about sitting around doing nothing, saying, all right, Jesus, it's not my responsibility, so you just go ahead and work through me. But it's also not about striving and straining and stressing and and doing a million different activities at the same time, trying to make sure we abide to the best of our ability. Abiding is simply a surrender, a submission of our very souls to God. It's a yielding. It's the ultimate, not my will, but your will be done. That's what abiding is. And when we surrender ourselves to God, that's when the life of the vine flows through us. And it's the vine that produces that fruit in us and through us. So our focus then is about staying connected to God. Not producing fruit, but staying connected. And if we are unable to do, we are unable to do anything for God if we're not connected in God and with God. So our job is to stay connected. What does that mean? We complicate things so oftentimes. And so we try to stay connected by, you know, again, just working hard and being busy and having activities and worrying that we're not producing enough fruit. But it's not complicated. It's not meant to add this extra stress and strain on ourselves. Abiding is just resting. Resting in the one that holds you and loves you more than you'll ever know. It's about that surrender to him. And it's a choice we make every single day. Not a one-time decision, but every single day waking up and saying, all right, God, not my will, but your will be done. Use me, work through me today. Not because it's from my efforts, but because of what you are doing in me and through me. The natural outcome of abiding is producing fruit. You can't abide in the vine and not produce fruit in this world. So bearing fruit relies on a dependence on the vine. We have to admit we can't do it on our own. We have to admit our weakness. We have to admit apart from him we can do nothing. That's hard to admit sometimes for a lot of us. But if we can if we can completely rely on that vine, that's when the sweetest fruit is produced. And what does that look like to kind of stay connected or abide? It's going to be different for all of us. The question is, how do you strengthen your relationship with God? Through prayer? Through daily reading of God's word and studying what God says to us through it? Through Joining a, a small group during the week or, or a Sunday school class so that there's a community together who are learning what it means to be Christ's disciple or, or maybe going on prayer walks. What are the ways that you strengthen your relationship 
with God, reading a, a devotional book of some kind. That's our focus, to stay connected each and every day, to remind ourselves who we are living in and what we are living for. Because I'll tell you what, this world will distract us so fast that we can go through an entire day and not even think about God. This world that we live in is pulling us in so many different directions that if we don't intentionally take some time and set it aside and say, all right, God, put it in your calendar, God time, 8 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 p.m., noon, whatever it is for you, and say, this is my time to strengthen my relationship so that I can go out into this world and bear your fruit. That's what it means to abide. And it sounds kind of simple, but it certainly isn't easy. Because this world does anything but encourage us to abide in Jesus. This world tells us we have to produce more if we are to be worthy. That in order to be good enough, we have to We have to succeed, we have to achieve, we have to attain, we have to earn. That's completely opposite from what abiding is and what it means for us. We abide, not because all the work is done and there's nothing else to do. We abide because there is so much work that if we don't first root ourselves in the vine, we are going to wear ourselves out. Our focus, our call, our responsibility is simply to stay connected. Nothing more, nothing less. And when that happens, we will be able to receive what Jesus gives us through the Holy Spirit. And we will be able to then allow that sap, that nourishment, that strength to produce fruit in us. What happens if we don't abide? We wither. We find life to be just that rat race, that you're climbing a ladder, but you're not going anywhere. It's meaningless. If we don't abide, we remove ourselves from the vine. And that looks different for different people. There's some people who think, oh, I can just live this life and I'm fine. I don't need God in my life. I can get along just fine. I can handle it on my own. I'm strong enough. There's others who once upon a time did have God a part of their life. They did believe, but then they lost that connection through the cares of this world that just kind of overshadowed and and choked out the importance of their relationship with God. There's those who think, well, hey, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, so it doesn't really matter what I do here on earth. And there's no focus on trying to live a fruitful life here and now. And yes, there's even some people who are a part of a church family, and they do, and they participate, and they get involved, and they volunteer, and over and over again, but it's not out of a relationship with Jesus. If we're not connected to the vine, we're not producing fruit for the world. And what is that fruit? Well, Paul gives us some pretty good examples of what that looks like. But notice the fruit is about what's growing inside of us. It's an inward disposition. It's about our attitudes and our thoughts first and foremost. So when Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit, about love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control, He's talking about what's going on inside of us. Those are all attributes 
so the fruits, first and foremost, are a part of our inward being. They're starting to grow inside of us, and only then do they make an outward gesture of how we live. We live treating other people in love. We live out of that joy. We live a patience with the people around us. And notice that we're not supposed to perfect these fruits. It's not like you're always going to be joyous or patient or peaceful. We know better than that, right? But it means those fruits are going to be present. They're going to be part of us. And the more we abide, the more present those fruits are. And the more they grow in us, the more they will show through us to the rest of the world. Because after all, the fruit isn't for the branch. The fruit is to give away to other people. The fruit is about sharing. It's about being a blessing to others. You see, when we talk about this vine and these branches, we're not doing it for us. We're producing fruit in order to be the best branches for the vine, in order to be a blessing to others. It's a giving away of ourselves, following in our Savior's footsteps as he gave himself away for us. Thomas Merton was a 20th century monk, and in one of his conversations with a a new Christian, who was kind of learning how to pray, Thomas Merton told him, he said, quit trying so hard to pray. And he used the example, he says, how does an apple ripen? It just sits in the sun. It just stays connected to the tree. An apple does not clench its fists and and tighten its jaws and try really super hard, and the next day it wakes up and all of a sudden it's a red, ripe, juicy apple. Like the birth of a baby, like the opening of a rose, the production of fruit happens over time when the branch is connected to the vine. That's our focus and that's our job. Not to produce fruit, but to stay connected in any way, shape, or form we can each and every day. We don't have to be anxious about it, stress about it, worry about it. Just stay connected no matter what. Because the vine will provide all that you ever need.